Hey so friends, welcome back to K Charles Couture. I'm so excited to see you here today. I'm excited to be here with you. If you're brand new to my page, welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button at the bottom so you don't miss any of the videos that I'm going to be posting for you each week. Today I'm really excited about the project we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a Simplicities pattern and it's actually one of the Mimi G from the Mimi G collection. It's 8466 and we're going to be doing this top. Let me tell you something. I've made this top two or three times now. I made it in green, I've made it in blue, and I think I made it one more in like a white with some different color sleeves. I really love the top. I think you're gonna love the top. I found this material, and I've had it for a little bit, but this is the material right here. And it's like a double knit, it's like a ponte, and it's nice and it's heavy enough, but doesn't have to be too heavy where you're hot when you have on this top. And only thing I could think of was me in this shirt with this pattern at the top. With these bell sleeves like this, rocking. I'm telling you, I'm excited about it. Um, now, there's a few things you're gonna need with this. You're gonna need a nine inch, a nine inch zipper, which I have. It does say invisible zipper. I don't I do have an invisible zipper, but it's in white. And I don't want to have a white zipper. I want my zipper to actually be blue. So I'm gonna be just using this regular zipper and um not an invisible zipper but it is a nine inch zipper because you're gonna need it for the back of your shirt i love mimi g i'm so happy that she came into the sewing world when she did she brought some new flavor to the patterns with simplicity this dress that i'm having on right now is actually a mimi g collection dress i made this dress probably four years ago this is one of the first mimi g dresses that i made and I actually made two of them. I made a gray one, and then after this one came out so nice, I went ahead and made me another one. Listen, this is what I love about someone. You can make whatever you want to make, and how many times you want to make it, how many different colors you want to make it, and you still can go to a party and not worry about someone there with your outfit on. So if you want to make this dress, she does have a sew on for that. I'm not going to be talking about this dress today. You're going to see me in it, and you're going to see me sewing with it, but this is a pattern right here. It's Mimi G's 8334. And again, she does have a sew along on YouTube, so you can follow her. I'll try to add that link down at the bottom. But this is the dress that I have on. I have the red one on, but I did it in the heather gray material. Again, this was the first dress I made. I love it. It's been around for years. When I tell you that you can sew quality material things that you can wear for years and years, you can do that. You don't have to look like you have on something and people say, ooh, where'd she get that from? They can say, ooh. Where did you get that from? They'll give you that look instead of that other look. So go ahead and grab your materials, grab your scissors, you know my motto, and let's begin.
Okay, now you have all your pieces cut out. The first thing you wanna do is grab piece number one. We're gonna make our dart in our shirt. So you already have, I'm gonna put it down so you can see. So this is piece number one. You should already have all your notches cut out and you should have your any marks that are on this pattern, you should have those placed on your material. So I've already went ahead and pinned my darts in place. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna go ahead and grab your material. You're gonna start at the end of those two dots and you're gonna fold them up like this together. We're gonna go in your, and you should have your mark. You see my mark, there's a little purple mark there. I'm gonna sew from the ends of here all the way to that mark and then I'm gonna leave a little hang and I'm gonna tie a knot in at the end. You're gonna make your dots in your piece and piece number one. Once you've done that, you're gonna go come back to your table or whatever place you're working on and we're gonna grab pieces number two, which is our back pieces. And we're just gonna go ahead and match them right sides facing at the shoulders. So match your notches up at your shoulders. Grab you some pins and we're gonna pin it. And y'all know my motto, whenever we pin something, that means we're about to sew it. That's right. So if we're pinning, that means we're sewing. Let's go ahead and pin the top of that, like that. Grab your other piece, match your notches up. Match up your notches on your shoulders, pin it in place. And we're gonna go over to our machine and we're gonna sew across the top of our shoulders at a 5 eighths, 5 eighths allowance, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance at the top of our shoulders. Then I'll show you the next step. And now we're gonna sew our shoulder seams. And you wanna use a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And you also wanna make sure that your back space at the beginning when you're sewing. And the other shoulder the same way. Okay, so I'm gonna be using my serger today. If you don't have a serger, don't worry about it. This pattern is so um, versatile that you don't have to have a serger. What you can do is, once you have your shoulder seams sewn together, like I have mine here, and again, you're using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, you can open this, you can do a couple things. One thing you can do is you can take it back to your sewing machine, and you can do a small zigzag stitch on the end, and that'll do the same thing that basically a serger is doing. Or you can open it up like this, press it down. Sorry. You can open it up, give it a good press like this, and it'll stay flat like this as well. But again, I'm going to use my serger, so I'm going to go ahead and serge this off. Okay, you're back from your machine. You have your shoulder seam together, and you also have your darts in your front piece. Let me show you the next step. I'm going to put this down so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so you want to go ahead and grab your collar piece. The collar is the one you only cut one piece of it. And the first thing you want to do is let me move this out the way. Yeah, I know I like to stay organized with my patterns. So I'll put it right back in the sleeve. This is nice. Okay, grab your collar and you're going to grab front sides facing. I'm sorry, not front sides facing. 
you're going to put wrong sides facing together. So this is what I want my collar to look like when it's on my shirt. So if you were doing a contrasting color, you just want to make sure that whatever your color is you're doing, you want to have that color showing. So these are right sides out because this is your collar. We folded it in half. Go ahead and grab your shirt. And we're going to go find your notches. And we're going to start there. And you're going to put your notches together with your piece. Just like that. Go ahead and pin it. Go do the other side. I always like to do my notches first and then go back in and ease everything else in. So go ahead and find your notches again. Pin it down. Then you're going to I like to just grab the ends like this so I can see how much play I have left with the collar so you know what you got to work with. Next thing you want to do is you should also have some of the, um, uh, you also have some markings to show you where the shoulder is going to meet. So go ahead and have that shoulder meet at that dot and pin it down. like that same thing with the other shoulder find your marking and go ahead and pin it and then you're going to go ahead and ease in your collar to your neck band so we'll do like that I always like to grab the middle of the neck band with the middle of the collar just like that And pin it together. And then you can give it a little stretch because this material does stretch. Give it a little so that when you go to the sewing machine, it sews right down. And of course, pin it down. Same thing with the other side in between those two pins. Find your collar and your neck band. Give it a stretch if you have to. Hold it down, pin it. Now you're going to go over to your machine and we're going to sew our collar onto our shirt. And then after I've done it using a 5 8 of an inch so seam allowance, after I do that, I'm also going to go ahead and seam and serge mines off so they have a nice clean edge on the inside. So your collar onto your shirt at the neck band.
Okay, so you should be back from your machine and now you should have your neck attached to your shirt and you should look something like this. Your neck is attached to the top piece of your shirt. And again, I went ahead and surged mine. You can fold, I mean, not fold it. You can zigzag stitch and cut off the excess if you want. And you go ahead and fold it, press it down so that your seam allowance is hanging down. Next thing we're doing is going to grab our sleeves. I'm going to push this down so you can see what I'm doing here. Because we're going to do a different method. We're going to do the flat method. We're not going to do the put it together, construct it together, and then add the sleeve. We're gonna add our sleeves right now. So, move this out of the way. Grab your shirt, like this. Where your sleeves is like this, that's one of your sleeves. Then grab one of your sleeves, in fact, I'm sorry, we're gonna turn this over. So that your right side is facing you. Grab your sleeve and you're going to face it down, right side's facing. And you're going to start it out notches. Find your notches. Which means I need this sleeve here. Find your notches. You're going to have a single notch and a double notch. So this is my double notches I'm matching here. So go ahead and pin this down at your notch and then find your notch over here pin it down like that and then find the end of your seams the end of your material and we're going to pin those down too so we're pinning it like that do the other side the same way Pin it down to the edge. And then you're gonna go ahead and work the middle the same way. So put your middle of your shoulder seam and your middle of your sleeve cap, face them together and put a pin in it. And then go ahead and ease in your sleeve on the sides. Pin it down. Again, these have stretch, so you can give it a little stretch just to make sure it's nice and secure. Put a pin in. You'll do that all the way around your sleeve. So when you finish, it should look like this. Give it a good little stretch. Just like that. And you should have your sleeve pinned down. So when you open it up, it's going to look like this. just like that attached to your shirt do the other side the same way and I'll just I'm gonna just go through it as you're watching me do it
Now that you have both of your sleeves pinned, go on over to your Mr. Sewing Machine, sew them, sew your sleeves on, and I'll show you the next step. Just make sure you tuck under all of those extra fabric so it doesn't get caught up. You don't want to have ripples in your sleeves. And you give it a stretch if you have to so that you know it's going to lay nice and flat once you've sewn it together. I'm going to serge my edges once I'm done. If you want, you can just give it a small zigzag stitch at the end to give it a nice finished look. Or you can just cut as close as you can to the edge. Okay, now that you have your sleeves attached to your uh, front and your back and your neck, we're gonna go ahead and fold this over like this. And we're gonna sew down our side seams on our shirt. So fold this in half and find your notches. Make sure you find your notches and match those up. Get your pin, pin it down. Put a couple pins in it all the way down. all the way down to the end of your side seam. Make sure your seams are matching. You don't want an arm hole when your seams look crooked. So make sure those are matching. Make sure your seams are pressed down towards your bodice. You're gonna do the same thing all the way down to the bottom. Add your notch. Do the same thing for the other side. Fold it in half with your sleeve. Find your notches. Match them up. Pin it down to the end of the sleeve. Make sure that your seams are facing down towards your bodice and that they're even. You don't want an uneven armhole seam. Pin it down. All the way down to the bottom. Make sure that your darts are facing down towards the bodice. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our machines and sew down our whole side seam and I'll show you the next step. From your machine and you should be looking like this. This should be what your shirt looks like now. You have your sleeves attached, you have the front and the back attached and you also have your collar face. Your back should still be open because of course we have to add a zipper in here. Now, we're just gonna slide this over to the side. Go ahead and grab your bell um, sleeves and we're gonna fold them right sides facing each other. Just like this. Grab some pins 
and pin it. Make sure you match your notches up. Go ahead and pin it. Just like that. Do it for both sides. Pin it down. Now, once you've gone over to your machine and you're going to sew this down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to, of course, take mine and I'm going to serge it. Then you're going to open it up after you have it sewn together and we're going to go ahead and sew the hem on it. The way you can sew the hem is you're just going to fold it down about a quarter of an inch and then you're going to fold it down again. And then you're going to sew straight across the bottom. So you're going to go ahead and hem these after you've gone and did the side stitch. Then... Once we've done that, we're going to come back and we're going to attach it to our sleeve. Stay tuned. All right, first things first, go ahead and sew the side seams together on your bell sleeve. the other one the same way. You just let me move my pants. Now I'm going to serge mine off real fast. If you don't have a serger, don't worry about it. You can do one of two things. You can do a small zigzag stitch across the edge and that will give it a nice finished look. Or you can just open up your seams like this. You can open up your seams like this. Because the next thing we're going to do is hem it. So once you have this seam open, give it a good press. And then you're going to fold it down twice, like I was telling you earlier, to give it a nice hem across the bottom. But I'm going to go ahead and run mine through the serger real quick. Okay, now that I have them surged, we're going to go ahead and put our hem in place. I'm going to fold it down so you can see. So you're going to get the bottom edge, open up your sleeve, and we're going to start right here at the center. We're going to fold it over about a quarter of an inch, and then we're going to fold it over again. You're going to do that all the way around, and then we're going to give it a nice hem. So I'm going to put it on my machine like that and I'm starting right at that seam and you can do like I did and just put it across the bottom of the arm of your sewing machine make sure you tuck it under twice take your time go ahead and start stitching now again I'm encouraging you to use pins I'm not using pins because I've done this for years and I just know how to hold it in place. But you're going to use pins. That will keep your material from sliding around. I'm just going to go all the way around and do this. And I'm going to 
that in a quarter of an inch, and then another quarter of an inch, and so on. And then once you've hemmed this down, I'm going to take it over to my iron and give it a good press before I attach it to my shirt. to the other end. Now. So now your sleeve, your bell sleeve, sorry about that. So now your bell sleeve is hemmed all the way around. Again, take it over to your iron and give it a good press. And that's what I'm gonna do. Do the same thing for your other sleeve and then I'm gonna show you how to attach it to your shirt. Okay, this is when you do your almost finished dance. Yeah, eh, 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 eh. Okay, but seriously, you should be looking like this right now. We are back from our machines. We have done our bell sleeves. We pressed it out. So your bell sleeve should be looking like this now. It's already hemmed at the bottom. Has a nice hem on the inside. Nice, clean and professional. So now we're gonna attach this to our shirt. So go ahead and grab your shirt. And we're gonna grab it right sides face. Go and pull your sleeve out. Go ahead and grab your sleeve out like this. Go grab your bell sleeve and we're gonna turn that inside out. Now, I love to start with my seams. That way I know that they're matching. And again, you don't want a shirt that's matching. So you're gonna take your sleeve and you're gonna put it inside your shirt upside down. So you're gonna go from the bottom of your sleeve into your shirt. Now, we do have notches on our sleeve, but I'm not following those notches right now. I'm gonna follow the seam. So go ahead and find your seams like that match them up because again we want everything to be nice and uniform take a pin stick it inside stretch it out when well, I stretch it out but go ahead and pull it out like that so that your sleeve is matching each other and then you're going to see that your notches are matching go ahead and pin those together as well Do the same thing. I just always add like one on each side just to give it a little more uniform so it doesn't move. Just like that. So you end up with four pins inside. Go ahead, pin it down. Go over to your machine. We're going to sew this close. And again, I'm going to use my serger and I'm going to serge it off. If you don't have a serger, don't worry about it. You can just sew it down and you can cut off the excess as close to the seam as you can or you're going to use a small zigzag stitch and it'll give you a nice clean finish too be back in a sec okay now unless you have a really skinny skinny arm on your sewing machine then you want to be careful when you're sewing your sleeve together because this hole is way too small to fit on the arm of your sewing machine so you want to just make sure you keep moving that material out of your way when you're sewing so you're going to see me doing like this a couple of times, and that's what I'm doing. I'm moving the material out the way so it doesn't get sewn in the mess. So go ahead and sew down your sleeve to your belt. And then when I get to the point where I feel like I need to turn and move the material, that's what I'm doing. So I take your material, start moving it back and forward so it can lay flat and you can continue to sew. 
That's what you want to do when you're doing your sleeves. And again, go ahead and pull it out and move it out the way. So you're pulling it out, moving it out the way at the same time. And going on to the next. And I know some of us, some of us sewers may be thinking that's something basic. People should know how to sew a sleeve and move the material out of the way. Well, I like to make sure that anyone and everyone can get on my page and learn how to sew. So if you're brand new to this and you've never done this before, this is what you need to do. Now, once you've done that, you have your sleeve attached to your bail. I am so in love with this right now. Now, I'm going to do my other sleeve the same way. And again, I'm going to take this over to my serger. And I'm going to serge off that edge right there. If you don't have a serger, just go through and do a small zigzag stitch all the way around. It'll give you a nice clean finish. Or you can just take your scissors and cut as close as possible to the seam without cutting into it. And then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you're going to go over to your sewing machine. And from the bottom, we're going to use a regular size stitch. And then we're going to go all the way up until we get to this notch where the end of your zipper is going to lie. Then we're going to stop right there, cut out threads, and then we're going to put a basting stitch and we're going to baste it from that notch all the way up to the end of our neckline. Then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you want to come over to your iron because we're going to press open that basting stitch. So we're going to lay it out flat like this. Press this open because we're going to insert our zipper. So you want to give this a good press open. All the way down to where you were, to that notch. So now that you got that flat open, let's go over to our table and I'm going to show you how to insert your zipper. <clears throat> okay, we're over here at the machine. And we're going to, we're only going to be working with one side of each seam allowance. We're only gonna be working with one side of each seam allowance for the zipper. So you first thing you wanna do is you wanna grab your zipper. We're gonna put it right sides down facing. I have a longer zipper because I like for my zipper pull to be out of the way when I'm sewing. That's just an option. So this one we did require a nine inch. So this is probably like an 11 inch zipper. So you're gonna make sure that the middle part is meeting the middle part of your seam. So when you're looking here, where you have those basting stitches, where you have those basting stitches, we're going to take our zipper and have it so that it's in the middle of those basting stitches. And we're only going to be working with one side. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Go ahead and grab you some pins and pin it down to one side. Just like that. And again, just the one side we're working with. Pin it down all the way till you get to the end. And you're going all the way down to that notch where your zipper is going to end. Then go ahead over to your machine. We're going to switch this feet for the zipper foot. Let me grab my zipper foot. Go ahead and switch your zipper foot. Like that. And again, on one side, one seam. We're going to sew it down on that side that we're working on.
And go ahead and sew that down. Once you have it done on one side, go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to tell you, you're going to move everything. Now we're going to move everything over to the other side. And we're going to work on that side. So go ahead and lay that out flat like that. to the top. Up to the top. And then back to your machine. Okay, now that you have the zipper attached only to the seam allowances, go ahead and turn your shirt inside out. Okay, now that you have the shirt turned inside out, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that basting stitch that we put down in the beginning. So grab your handy dandy seam ripper, just like that. And it should come out pretty easy because you should have it. Your basting stitch should always be at the most highest stitch that you have possible so that you can easily go through and grab this apart just like this. I can use this little bowl. Go ahead and remove those stitches. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, you're gonna go all the way down till you get to the end of the zipper. I mean, you want to get all the way down till you go to that notch edge where you'll see that the basin stitch will stop. It won't be so easy to remove those threads anymore. So that's where our stitches stop. That's where the basin stitch stops and it, you should be looking like this. So I just like to go ahead and pull my little threads out the way so that they're not in the way, just like that. Yep, grab your scissors and just cut it off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the zipper 
like that and you're going to take your shirt and we're going to open it all the way up like this the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in with our zipper and we're going to You're going to lay it flat just like this. And if you can, go ahead and tuck your zipper down underneath this shirt if you can. not If you can't, don't worry about it. But I can, so I'm going to go ahead and tuck mine down. Like that, so it's out the way completely. So, go over to your machine, and we're going to open it up flat just like this. Now, we're going to use our zipper foot again. I'm going to see if I can get a good visual for you here. that and you're going to lay it out flat now we're going to get as close as possible as we can to our zipper teeth you may even have to move them over and we're going to stitch all the way down that way when we close up our shirt the visible the zipper is going to become invisible because that's what we want so go ahead and start stitching I want you to so you can see let's go ahead and stitch and then again like I said move those zipper teeth out your way as you're sewing okay that's a good view now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and as you're sewing we're going to move those zipper teeth out the way and you're going to sew in that crease of your zipper tape let's start Remember, open up the tape and zip and sew in that zipper tape all the way down. other side the same way so what's gonna happen is when we do the other side and you flip it on the inside that bit that the zipper is gonna be invisible it's gonna go away so do the other side the same way we're gonna start this one from the bottom of course so start from the bottom And the same way we did the other side, just move your little zipper teeth out the way as you're going up. And get it as close as possible to those zipper teeth. Your zipper is now in place. Let's pull it back out of the shirt. And now your zipper is in place. Give it a good press at your arm. Look how nice that looks. And then you want to give it a good press over at your iron table. Next step is put the bottom on and we're almost done. Okay, once you have your zipper attached to your shirt, if you're like me, you may have a little hang left over. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold that to the inside of the seam allowance. We're going to fold it over like we just finished sewing. And you're going to give it a little tack right there on your sewing machine. So let me show you. Just give it a little tack. 
so that it stays shut. Just a quick little tack. Just like that. And then when you go to zip it up, when you zip it at the top, there's a nice clean finish. Okay, once you have your two pieces tacked down like I just showed you, now you have a nice clean finish at your top and it closes up nicely. Look at that, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to put this on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is add our lower band and we're done. So go ahead and grab your lower band pieces. Now what you wanna do is you're gonna go over to your sewing machine while your pieces are like this close together. We're going to sew down each one of this up so you can see sorry you know you couldn't see okay so take your lower band and we're going to sew down each one of the sides your notches are already meeting so that's a good thing you don't have to recheck it you don't really have to pin it we're just going to go down and sew it and i'm going to sew mine and i'm also going to put a serge in it okay so now that you have your zipper on and i showed you how to tack it down at the top so now you have a nice clean finish at the top which is zipper Looking good, right? Next thing is we're going to add our lower band. So go ahead and move this shirt out of the way for a minute. Grab your lower band. With right sides together, you want to pin your sides. Pin the sides down. And you know what that means. If we're pinning, that means we're about to sew. So go ahead over to your sewing machine. Sew down your side, sew down the side seams of your lower band. Once you've done that, you don't have to serge it if you're using a serger or don't worry about finishing off this edge because once we've done that, we're gonna come back and we're gonna fold this in half like this. So it's gonna be in half and then we're gonna attach it to the shirt. So go on over to your machine and sew down your sides and I'll be right back. You're back from your machine and you have both of your sides sewn down. Go ahead and flip this in half. Right sides facing up. So you want the wrong sides facing each other. Make sure that your seams are matching. You know how I am about those crooked seams. We don't want that. Get it nice and flat like that. Go ahead over to the other side. Do the same thing. Nice and flat. Now, we're going to make sure that your seams are matching and that they're flat. You don't want that bubble inside your bottom band. All right, now that we have that like that, go ahead and grab your shirt and we're gonna keep it right sides facing. And you're going to find these notches that we have at the bottom of our shirt. And we're going to match them to the bottom of the, we're going to match it to the notches on our band. So go ahead and put your shirt in like this. Go from the bottom of your band. Find your shirt, find the notches and start matching your notches up. So this notch goes with those and then go ahead and stick a pin in it do the same thing on the other side match your notches like this stick a pin in it make sure that your side seams are matching so you don't want it to look like your shirt is having all kind of issues and problems. So go ahead and 
So pin that down and go around to the front. Do the same thing. Find your notches and match those up. I have a notch right here and right there. Go ahead and put that on there. Same thing on this one. Find your notches, match them up, pin it down. Find your side seams and make sure that they're matching. Keep everything nice and uniformed. You're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew all the way across the bottom of your shirt and match your band, your bottom band with your shirt. I'm going to also take mine as a surgeon. Remember, if you don't have a surgeon, don't worry about it. You can press your seams open or you can just cut off the excess as close as you can to the stitch without cutting the stitch. And then we're going to be done. I'll be back. So we're going ahead and attach our band to our shirt. And because it has some stretch, you can give it a little stretch if you have a little leg. You gotta go all the way around. enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you hey I didn't forget this little piece of mess I don't know because face covers now are becoming a part of the new normal so of course you got to make a mask to go with this outfit oh my gosh let me tell you something the shirt actually came out better than I envisioned it it's gonna come out if you want to see how I'm gonna style that and the mask then I need you to do something for me I need you to meet me at my Facebook page K Charles Couture Hit that like button, and then that way you'll be a part of the group. We want you to come and join the group. There's a lot of people in the group. We share a lot of tips. We talk about patterns. We talk about reviews. We talk about a little bit of everything. Come join the group. I think you're going to love it. I can't wait to see you there, and that way you can see how I'm going to style this and add the mask to it. I know you don't want to miss that. Next week, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're still going to be doing a video, but it's not going to necessarily be a sewing video. The reason I'm not doing a sewing video next week is because you all know I have flood. So they're going to be coming and doing some like construction inside the sewing studio. So next week is going to be a DIY and it's going to be a closet transformation. I can't wait for you to see how I transform my closet. Right now, I have a little small walk-in closet and the way they had it, configure it it didn't utilize a lot of the space i don't like that so i'm going to utilize a lot of the space space i'm going to have more storage in there it's going to be more functional for me and i can't wait for you all to see how i'm going to do it and i'm going to tell you a tip 
I did it all for under $150. I'm going to show show you everything that I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how I'm putting all the shelves together, how I'm going to be putting up the hang. I'm going to show you every single thing. So I hope you enjoyed that video as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Go ahead and hit that like button. Go and give me a thumbs up if you really like this, if you really like the top. If you, I can't, again, I can't wait to see you on my Facebook group just so you can see how I'm going to style this up because I'm not sharing on the YouTube page. I'm not doing that anymore. You got to come join me on Facebook so you can see how I'm going to style it. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button at the bottom so you don't miss any of the videos that I want to be posting for you. And I am going to be posting a video every single week. I look forward to working with you all soon. Peace.